The vision received was that of blood cells traveling throughout the body supplying the much needed oxygen and other nutrients to the differing members of the body to fulfill their purpose. Once the blood cells are spent, they must return back to the heart to be refilled before being sent out again and fulfill their purpose. So when you think about, you know, um, the previous podcast about our Father's Heart for Family Ministry, I was trying to emphasize the thrust that the man, the husband, needs to realize what is the God divine given responsibilities that he has and he has to fulfill them. And the wife, mother, has to find out what are those God divinely inspired responsibilities that I have been given as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, and I have to fulfill them. And if the man and the woman will fulfill their responsibilities that God has given them, then they will have a blessed and highly favored family. They will produce fruit that that others will be like, wow, your marriage, wow, your children. That's why I think so many of them speak highly of our children now. Because I remember when we when we were doing homeschooling, um, many would talk about the children and, and how respectful they were and how well-mannered they were. But think about homeschooling. They dealt with a lot of who? Not children, like in a public school setting. Who were they relating with? Adults. A lot of adults. They and when a children. child has to relate with adults, they act different. They, they a, behave right. different. They had they had a lot of um, they had children, but they also had God provided us with different people. I was just thinking about uh, Marta. Uh, well, Marta, yeah, she was like um, she became like a surrogate grandmother, grandmother, and um, very much so. Um, you know that they um, learn. You know she got sick too, and I they were part of all of that visiting her. <clears throat> in the hospital when she mm-hmm. went in and out um the the kids when we when we were serving the lord you know not to be religious but just visiting the sick in the hospital or ministering to different people they were with us they were they were, they were with me watching that mm-hmm. up close and personal and with us if we did it on the weekends or you know we did things as a family unit so they did grow up seeing not just not just hearing about the bible but seeing us live out the call that God had on our life and um, learn how to place themselves in, in, you know, how to, how to be in those situations. They didn't do it perfect. Sometimes we would have to guide them on, okay, well, you can't do this. And, you know, you have to know your place as a child and all of that, but they did get to experience um, something that's hard to do in, in, in school system is to replicate the, replicate that interacting with, a lot of different age group kids, Mm -hmm. not just adults, but Mm -hmm. different age group kids, younger kids. Younger, peers, older Our kids learned how to take care of the little kids Mm -hmm. in a lot of co-op settings or in the church as they grew up. And I think of the old pioneer movies and the Amish, um, the the things that they model. And there are some things that they model that are very, um, to me, honorable. You know, how you raise your child to work. Uh, and be part of the family and, and providing the work. And, and so it's not just you're going out to get an education, but you're an integral member of the family. You're, you have chores in the house. You have to clean the dishes. Our kids hated cleaning the dishes. Um, you know, different responsibilities that just instill in them how to function in society and how, um, um, you know, like my husband said, how to appreciate uh, things. You mean that, me? Yeah, Jay. Okay, you could refer to me. Yeah, that's how Jay said. <laughs> how to appreciate, um, you know, but they have to see us doing it. They have to see, um, you know, me being a submitted wife. They have to see, um, sometimes when we had our disagreements, they had to see how we worked it out. Um, they had to see, so, um, you know, we didn't shelter They had them. to see the good. They had to see the good, the bad, and the ugly They had to see us. the bad, and, and they had to see the ugly. Yeah. And they had to see us react to the pressures of um, people disagreeing with us. I, I One example, and Mom Art, I loved her, but one time I had a women's fellowship here 
our daughter, our youngest, was a very finicky eater, and she did not eat her food the night before. Still is. And I told her, you know, you, uh, you're you not going to get anything else until you eat that food. So it was one of those deals, like you serve it for breakfast and you serve it for lunch. Well, so, you know, she could, she could kind of fast and be fine, but here there was this luscious um, dessert that was served to the women, and she was expecting to get a piece, and she didn't get one because she hadn't eaten that, that particular food. And um, I got, oh my gosh, I got the pressure of pressures from my sisters in the faith because here's this cute little ba- you know, kid just, you know, tearing up a little eye, the little, her eyes are brimming about to cry. Oh, Sister and, Patricia. Yeah, and they were trying to get me to waver on it and I didn't. And I, but I felt bad. I, I felt guilty and I felt like, oh my gosh, what are they going to think of me? I went through all that. Well, then the next day I got an email from Mom Marta telling me how proud she was of me for taking my stand on that issue. And I wrote her back and I said, thank you, but I would have appreciated the support at the the time that it happened. That was just one incident. It was kind of funny, but it reminded me that, you know, when God puts on your heart to do something, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you. You cannot waver from that. And, And with our kids, that was important. Because in the moment that we wavered and we showed that weakness, that's that's an in for the enemy to put in their hearts that, you know, like they might get away with it next time kind of deal. And did I do that perfect? No, there were probably times that I gave in on something that I had resolved. But I remember that one incident and how the Lord just put a resolve in my heart to stand my ground on it. Um, and all of that is God being so good, providing us with family systems and people in our life when we purpose to serve him and do what what he called us to do so if yeah we... you just reminded me our kids uh they were involved in other people's lives other people's deaths yes other people in health and other people struggling through sickness yeah they were a part of that. We didn't really hide that or isolate that from them. I, I remember us ministering to, uh, you know, the Perez family in Miami and his grandfather yeah. was, that was the first slowly one. passing then, away yeah, the and eventually the mom, mom had some health away. issues yeah. and uh, they were involved in all of that. And then when we came up here, Mamarda and, and uh, you know, and again, because we wanted to expose them in a way that we could be alongside them to help them. That's really, uh, I think, one of the major reasons why we didn't want them going into public schools too early Um, and why we ended up deciding, well, I mean, we ended up deciding to have them go into public schools because the whole reasoning behind it is that, okay, we've taught them from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. We could continue to decide to teach them all the way through high school, you were perfectly capable of doing that. They would have been highly academically successful. I have no doubt in my mind that any of them would have done poorly at all. They could have gone into college and academically would have been fantastic. I have no doubt. But socially, getting a glimpse of the world, mm-hmm. that was that was something we could not replicate in our home. Right. And because I was a teacher in the school that they would have gone into... That's why I felt like because I'm there, I can still walk alongside them. I can still watch them from a distance. They can get the exposure that they need because I did not want them to go into college with all the nonsense that they're filling these college kids with, all of these indoctrination programs that we're seeing right now in the 20, in 2021. I didn't want them to see that for the first time and then not know how to deal with it. I felt like because of, you know, you know, people speaking into our lives, the, the rationale and the stuff that I considered it and I thought, okay, I get it. I, I don't want them to go to college and then see it for the first time. I'd rather them go into high school and because I'm teaching in the high school and because you're so close, you know, within 10 minutes away from the high school and you're actually, I think you were started working in the high school in the after school program. I think that we could, we could do that and, and make sure that it's successful for them and that we don't lose uh, ground uh, with what we've been filling in with them. So we decided in ninth grade that each of them would go into school. 
that brought along its own struggles and battles. Um, our first child went there, uh, the, the oldest, uh, a year later, right? The second one came in? Uh, yeah, John Daniel came in the second right. year. And then, and then two, two years, years passed, after that. And then Deborah came in. <clears throat> so you didn't come into to school until she came into high school to be a teacher. You came in... Well, I was working in the after after school program and I, I didn't start working until she was in 10th grade and Lydia had graduated. Lydia was going to college when I started Mm -hmm. working full time in the high school. Um, so John Daniel and Deborah had to go through the transition of mom, not being full time mom. Now I was having a full time job and navigating and it was hard. It was a a very difficult transition for me because it had been years since I'd been in the public school system. Um, And I knew how to teach, but I was having to learn how to teach larger populations, uh, learn the system of the public school, all the, you know, the grade book, all the stuff that you have to learn when you go there. Um, I had a, a, there was a teacher there that encouraged me a lot. He was, he was a science teacher, but he just told me it'll, you'll feel better about this after three years. And I'm like, three years, I can't, I don't think I could conceive of this for three years. And now I'm the one encouraging new teachers with the same thing that he said to me, that every year it would be better. But after the third year, I would start feeling really comfortable with what I was doing. So I think even that, I thank God for people that he puts. They're, they may not be Christians, but they're just people that God places in your life when you need words of encouragement, when you're struggling, when you're battling and you know the most unlikely person just comes out of the blue and pops out and says something to you know, boost you up and remind you. And, and, and I, I'm learning in all of this to just say, thank you, God, because I, he is the one who provides everything that we need, like everything. So even, you know, the heartaches that we went through with our kids, the Lord took us through that. Um, and he's taken us through a lot of different levels of, of, of change, learning how to navigate change. That's been a biggie for me. Um, Teaching our children how to do that. This change because, doesn't come easy for you naturally. Well, now it's getting easier. I mean, when. But when, I mean, in your past. In my past, no. When the first person first told me a word of the Lord, I was not very happy with her. And I think I shared that in the other podcast that God was going to um, shake my tree. Like I was going to be, you know, shaken and I was going to have to learn how to fly to the new thing. Um, that was something he was going to be doing constantly in my life. So it was like, well, nobody ever wants to hear that. Um, so she said, don't get too comfortable. Don't settle yourself too much. Um, and I, I, I still talk, I talk, this is one of my best friends. I talk to her and I laugh when I think about that because I said, man, have I seen that play out in my life in so many different ways. And it's been, it's been, it's been a journey. Um, not, you know, it's had its challenges, big challenges and pain, but it's also been a journey that has brought me to a settled settled place not settled in the way like she used to talk about before but settled in him because if we're settled in the lord it doesn't matter what change he brings Mm -hmm. you'll be you'll he'll carry you through that change Uh, my problem is i always fought it so it wasn't like a peaceful transition um but yeah i you know the the point of of this thrust of this of what my husband was wanting to share you know, was the heartbeat that I had when, when he and I got married that, um, I needed to be able to follow him, to submit to him, to trust his leadership in all the things that we did. And he needed to trust me with the part that was my part in the home with the children. And because of that, I felt always very affirmed by him and what I was doing and who can't perform greatly when they have a principal who's like all on board with what you're doing. Jay was the principal of our house. The kids knew that. Um, so if there were any disciplinary problems that I couldn't take care of. Oh, the headmaster. He was the one that when he got home, they were going to have to (laughs) deal with him. And, um, but it worked out. God worked that out really well. Um, he brought the support system we needed when we needed it. Um, my Jay's father lived next door to us for a season, so he was part of it for a season. Um, when we had to do our changing of the guard transition thing, he was the he was the go to babysitter or caretaker for the kids. 
for, you know, for a couple of hours and stuff. But that was its season that they got to be close to him and um, experience things with their grandfather right next door. So I know we're very thankful, or I think I speak for both of us, that we're very thankful for every way the Lord set set it all up. And, and I think the kids, our children, are thankful as they reflect back. Um, sometimes they complain about some things, but I think deep down inside they know there was so much love going on in this house. Um, and, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit more maturing to get to the place where you fully appreciate it. But I think they're there. They just don't want I think anything. the eldest is there. Yeah. I'm not sure about the other two. The other two are coming along. But then again, they're not as old as her. They haven't gone through life as much as her. They're coming so. along. And I think deep down inside there is an appreciation and a, and a gratitude. And um, as they live out life and they see things transpire, I think the Lord will bring that home to them. I know even with me, I was not brought up perfectly. There were a lot of things that I went through growing up. But I do appreciate the discipline. I do appreciate the... I was the girl and I resented it when I was growing up that they were, my parents were very strict with me because I was the girl. But I do appreciate that because I'd see God's protective hand on my life during that time. I see what my brothers dabbled into that I didn't dabble in as much or at all that was God protecting me during that period of my life. So, um, now, you know, now that you mentioned that, I'm thinking, um, I guess we, I, I think the kids would confirm that their most traumatic and most difficult time in their life was during high school. It was for all three of them. All three of them. Yeah. Um, and I and I think about that, and 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 I wonder, gosh, could we have done it differently? Could we have done it better? Um, because I, I think our, our reasoning for wanting them to go into high school was valid. I think they needed some type of exposure to how the world really is out there. You know, when you're homeschooling, um, you do get exposed to some different type of people out there you know interesting people but not to the level and degree that you see in public school right the level and degree that you see in public school is is radically different than than the exposure that you'll get at homeschooling and i wish there was i mean gosh we're not god <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen when we you know do something for sure what exactly is going to take place we just knew that that we wanted to walk alongside them as they went through it and we did we walked we alongside did. them and i think that even the traumatic things that each of them experienced um was something that god used to to um to develop them and to strengthen them so that when they went to college because they met with some challenges there they were able to handle they were it better. much better able to handle yes. what they went through in college probably because of what they went through in high school and how, what they learned from those things. So I think that that gives me a sense of, eh, I guess it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was you know? hard, but we saw that, you know, God, the, the, it's, it's not a cliche, it's a biblical verse, but people want to say it's a cliche, that all things work together for good for true. those who love the Lord yes. and are called according to his purpose. Well, you know, nobody likes to see the traumatic, but you see... We, I see, I, and I think you see that when they, everything that they went through had to bring out, had to bring out the ugly in them and how to figure out how to walk in the better, how to be the better person, how to navigate. To walk in a more perfect way. Yeah. And how to navigate injustice, which like you said, is all over yeah. our world, yeah. how to, how to handle that. And God favored them when they took those steps when they were able to do that that somehow they all figured out a way to redeem the the whatever each of them had met with or whatever each of them had whatever we had experienced for with each of them and during each of them so at the time no we probably would not have said what we're saying right now but now in hindsight 
you know, we see that the God worked it together. We might have. It was just. It was just. Uh, it was really difficult, and you know, it, it's it's difficult when you were there close by, and difficult to hear afterward, after the fact, how deep and dire it actually was. Yeah. And you were there. Yeah. You know. Um, but again, you know, we always have to go back to God works all things together for good. Because mm-hmm. if we got hung up on the injustices and the things that we see, we would we would be crushed and broken and maybe angry and walk away even from the Lord. But we can't. We have to continue looking at him and trusting and praying for those that don't know him, that the experiences that they go through that are heart wrenching would draw them to God. Um, we're living right now a situ, you know, the you started with the Lowndes situation. Oh, Loudoun County. Loud and and yeah. and the other the things that we see up close, the 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 anxiety that's riddled in the students in the children, even in the universities and colleges that our children describe to us, the level of of pain and anxiety that um, everyone has experienced is something the flat out indoctrination. It's in, in raging the college system. so so hard and. All we can do is um, encourage our children to be a light, encourage our children to be a blessing, and um, as we find out about things, be intercessors and praying and trusting and believing what we walk, the faith that we walk, that God will bring forth uh, redemption and breakthroughs for those that we intercede for, that he will do it. We may not see it. We may see it. We may not see it. But we have to trust that if he put it on our hearts to pray and we pray, he is going to do something. So he's making a difference through the lives of our children, through our lives, impacting people out there that that don't know God or people that think they know God and they're walking in all this stuff and they really, they don't. There's no peace. There's the, the lack of peace is the biggest thing that I've seen that's pressing on my heart, make me cry to the Lord, you know, for the, the despair that's probably the word I'm looking for for the despair that I see raging in the in the children in mm-hmm. the in the kids in the college kids I call them kids in the high school kids and the younger kids the, the the stealing of their innocence which is opening the river of despair in their life mm-hmm. and um, we have to be we have to stand up for the righteousness and believe and trust that God is going to um, affect their world through anyone that we that we reach and the or the ones that our children or people that we know reach so amen um i think we got to the present day um and i think it's a good place for us to close out um we thank you for joining us um we hope that our continued testimony has been a blessing we left out a lot of details um but um whenever necessary when we speak with people personally uh we probably will always uh you know give forth uh more of those details so that the testimony is more impactful but hopefully for y'all um that are listening um that the tidbits that you did receive that it will help you realize that if you put your plans before the lord Mm -hmm. he will direct your steps yes if you will embrace the word of god for you as a man as a husband as a father if you will embrace the word of god for you as a woman as a wife as a mother and seek to fulfill your responsibilities that he has delegated unto you then i can safely say without reservation that you will reap the rewards yes. of that obedience. Yes. He will bless you. He will bless your children. He will bless your children's children. Yes, he will. Because of your obedience. Yes. And so we encourage you to get into the word, find out his way, and endeavor to walk his way so that you can be blessed and highly favored as much as we have 
and as much as many of the saints that we read in the scriptures have and many of the brothers and sisters that are living today that we know of, there are so many that we know of that have been blessed because they have trusted in God's word, mm -hmm. implemented it in their life, whether they understood it fully or not, whether they embraced it fully or not, they have all been blessed Yes, because they, uh, j they just simply put their trust in him. Yes. And so we uh, hope that you will do the same. Yes. But uh, we hope that your day and your week is blessed. And we will see you here once again for another podcast soon. God bless everyone. Thus is the ministry of our Father's heart through us. Our utmost desire is to be in the Father's heart, to know the Father's heart, and express the Father's heart to you. If you appreciate listening to this podcast and were blessed, pass it along to someone else by text, email, or word of mouth in the hopes that they might be positively impacted as you were. If you are interested in supporting our efforts, we would ask you to consider the following. One, pray for us. Two, leave a positive rating or review with whomever you listen to our podcast with. And three, if you desire to contribute monetarily, you can do so at paypal.me slash j ben jesus or you can cash app dollar sign j ben jesus or you can venmo at j ben jesus that's j b e n j e s u s god bless